In this video, we're going to look at another feature called compute variable, which is a way to kind of take two columns, for example, and or not necessarily columns, but create a mathematical expression that will then create a new column from some sort of input. So for example, if we open up demo.sav, which is in the samples folder, you may, you may want to take wireless and multi-line and voice and pager and internet and try to come up with, say maybe you add them together, to get a score to see how internet connected or how computer savvy, how tech savvy they might be. And in order to do that, you will go up to transform and click on compute variable. And again, the idea here is essentially you create a, an expression and you create a new column to hold that expression's result. So let's say that I want to figure out who's the most techie. So I create a new variable called techie, or if I needed to, I could use an existing variable, but I want to create a new variable, so a new column here. And what I'm going to do is type in internet plus wireless as my expression. So you can see this is, uses the metaphor of a calculator, right? There's a plus sign, and then you have things like not, and so these are kind of logical operators, right? You have less than, less than or equal to, you, and other different uh, expressions that you could provide. But what I want to do is just simply take the variable called internet, and notice it's not surrounded by brackets or anything else. It's just internet, so internet here plus wireless and here's wireless. We're going to add the two together and basically put the result in a new variable called techie and hit OK. Now, notice too that if you needed to create, this is, and this goes beyond what we're actually trying to do in this particular example, but let's say that you wanted to create a brand new column. You could type in anything that you want here and then type in any value that you want here and just have that value, uh, or any expression, of course, too, and have that value be propagated all the way down that new uh, variable that you create. In any case, for now, let's just do this. We'll click on OK, and we'll see the results as it runs through here. And if you scroll over, we'll see a new value called techie. Now, if this is bugging you that it has a dot zero zero, uh, we talked about this a little bit in the pa in a previous video. You can go to techie, go to the decimals, and then change that down to zero, and then now go back to your data view, and sure enough, they are gone. Now, another way you could use this, or one way to use this, is through what's called a function. And the function, uh, basically a function is what you kind of would expect. It is a programmatic function. You give it some variables, it gives you some output. And what we can do if we open up the stocks.sav file is go to, essentially, uh, we're going to go up to transform and we're going to go back down to compute like we did before. But let's say that what we want is the average between the stock's close, low, and high point, And we'll create a new column to do that. So the way you do this is transform and then compute variable. And let's create a new, uh, a new variable. Let's call it uh, stock mean. And now what we're going to do is, so, so you could type close plus high plus and let's, uh, let's be specific here on uh, case sensitivity, right? Close, high, and low. And you could take all those and divide by three to come up with the mean. Or you could simply do mean. This is the use of the function. The function is called mean. And you give it the three variables. So you say close, and high, and low. Now, you if you need to require that some of these variables, say two of these variables at least have a value, then you can do a dot two. In fact, if you don't do any of it, anything here, the default is to sort of put in a dot one internally. So the, the software is automatically going to do a dot one. But in our case, let's let's just do, do exa exactly that. We'll just do a mean, close, high, and low, and we will click on OK. We should get a new column to appear here. And we do, so we get the stock mean, and there we go. We get the means for the close, high, and low. Now, how is it that I knew that function existed at all? And the way you can find that is actually pretty easy. Go to transform compute variable, and then on the right, you'll see 
function group. So we had said mean and then used those variables. And you might think, well, okay, I want this is actually the arithmetic mean. It's the average, so I should click on arithmetic and then go down to see mean. But actually, it's not here. If that's the case, you can click on all, and then you can click down below and type in M-E-A-N, and you'll see it appear here. And this is nice because this is a listing of the function. It's the syntax. It tells you how the function works. And this is a very quick way to get information about your function, kind of the way you would expect. Now the reason you couldn't find mean under arithmetic is because it is listed under statistical along with, so here's mean, along with max and median, min, standard, deviation, sum, and variance. Now another really common thing to do when you're in the compute variable dialog box and really just looking at data in general is that you may want to create an if statement that is a conditional expression and because we're talking about computing we want to express and that's done through expressions we want to express a condition and that's done on a case by case basis so what does that what I mean by that well let's, let's take this example of volume if the day's volume exceeds 80,000 maybe we want to express that here in the variable so let's try that let's go to transform compute variable and we're going to call this busy and what we're going to do is go down to the if which is the optional case selection condition button we're going to click on that and it's going to say well do you want to include all cases or just want to include the cases that match we just want to include those cases that match where the volume so we can double click or we can click on this and then the arrow and then we say the volume is greater than or equal if you want but for our example let's just make this very simple say 80 zero 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 so 80,000 and then we will continue but notice you could also use functions in this uh, in this if or the conditional expression dialog box and now notice we can't click OK here and the reason for that is because we need to have some va some expression we need to have a value be placed in the resulting new column called busy so let's say that we wanted this just to say uh, busy. Well, you probably wouldn't, by the way. I mean, you probably want to have an actual numeric expression that says maybe zero for not busy, and then in this case, one for busy. But, you know, you could do busy in that case. And if you do, you'd want to go to the type button and then make sure that it's set for string. So I want to keep this simple, and actually, I'm just going to output the volume uh, that is listed here. So we could have clicked here and hit volume, or you can type it in, and then you just click on OK. And then notice the result that we get. So we have a new column created called busy. And then we get those values from the volume that exceeded or greater than 80,000.